bless you. Good morning, everyone. So glad to see you this morning. So glad that you came to worship with us. Thank you, Pastor Jason, Elizabeth, worship team. They, didn't they do a great job leading us in worship today? One quick announcement that we want to share with you. We do have our annual report that is coming up uh, on a Wednesday evening in the month of March. And during our annual report this year, we'll be filling three seats on our board of deacons and trustees. And so next week and the following week, we're going to receive nominations from the congregation for people to serve on our board. The qualifications of board members have been printed in your bulletin for you. Uh, you have to be a member of Harvest Time Church to serve on our board, and you have to be a member to nominate someone to serve on our board. Uh, but if you are a member, you can take a look at those qualifications and just uh, prayerfully consider participating in that uh, uh, whole uh, process this year. Uh, we're so privileged and blessed to have our dear friends, Pastor Brian and Candace Simmons with us this morning. Uh, Pastor Brian pastored here in Connecticut, Gateway Church in West Haven for 18 years. Uh, and, you know, not only did he grow a great local church, but Gateway uh, was and is a church that reached out to the whole body of Christ in this region, uh, blessing uh, family members of the body of Christ, pastors. And I remember when we were building this building, uh, I went to a meeting at Gateway, and I really didn't know Pastor Brian. Um, we hadn't really spoken that much, but we had a short conversation, and uh, he asked me about the building. And, and after that, about a week later, I got a beautiful card from him and a beautiful offering towards the construction of this building. And I want to tell you that act of kindness, that gesture of graciousness. You know, uh, Pastor Brian, no other pastor ever did that uh, and, and sowed a seed into our ministry like that, and it touched us so deeply. And uh, when we knew Pastor Brian was uh, leaving Gateway and going to be traveling full-time, I, I told him, I said, I want, I want you to come to Harvest Time first. I want, I want this to be the first place. And they've made so many wonderful deposits in us uh, over, over the years. Uh, Pastor Brian, of course, is the lead translator of the Passion Translation, uh, which is a dynamic equivalent. Before pastoring uh, here in Connecticut, they were missionaries in the jungles of South America, and they were Bible translators, translating the scripture uh, into a language for a tribal people. Uh, and so their background is Bible translation, and he's uh, working on the Passion Translation, which is a dynamic equivalent translation of scripture uh, that's really targeting a new generation. And I want to tell you, it is lighting people on fire for the word of God around the world. Uh, some national ministries, even global ministries that you'd be familiar with, uh, I tune in from time to time, and uh, there they are reading from the Passion Translation. And uh, we're just so blessed to have them. I wonder if you would just stand on your feet and give your best welcome this morning for our friends, Pastor Brian and Candace Simmons. Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat, everybody. And thank you for your kind-hearted welcome. Good to be back here in this Methodist church. I mean, Harvest Time Church here this morning. No, Methodists are fine. We love them, you know. Get them good, Lord. Uh, yeah, Candace, you know, she's going to take the mic and share some things. But can I just tell you how amazing she is? And... She hears from God. She really hears from the Lord. For the last years that we've been traveling, every time we go somewhere, that the night before we minister, the Lord gives her dreams, supernatural dreams, full of insight as to what we're to share, how we can bless the church, maybe even encourage the leadership team. And I know uh, we've not had a lot of time to talk about it this morning because I rushed off early for the first service, but you had some dreams last night for the church? Okay, cut loose. First of all, I just want to say I'm sad that not other pastors have sent you checks for your building. So, Lord, we just ask for this new building, Lord, that there'll be release of finances from other churches, Lord, that they would sow into this great work. Lord, we in New England want to be known for our giving, Lord. We break the spirit of poverty over New England, Lord Jesus. And as the Lord told me, he said, this year I want you to have be a glass full and overflowing. And when I ask you to give... 
give even more than that. So I just want to be a liberal, happy giver, and I just speak that over New England, over the other churches, Lord, and I pray an exponential blessing over them as they sow. So, Lord, just bring those checks from those other churches because they will be blessed if they bless this project that's out here. So thank you, Father. It's not about us. It's about the kingdom. So I just want to say I did have, sometimes the Lord prophesies to me in dreams, and he prophesied to me about you, and he said, new, 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 new vision, just so much vision pouring out, and that's so much better than old, 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 isn't it, as my husband would say. Such good stuff, not bad stuff, but new, good stuff coming in, and it's going to be wonderful what happens, and I saw your roots going down so deep. Last time I was here, I saw them going out, and you're doing that. You're touching the neighborhoods, but... This church is going to be here for a long time. It's going to endure the test of time, I felt the Lord say. And your youth, uh, you're going to see the presence sweep into your youth group, the Lord said. And youth are going to be saved, saved, and really, really saved. Uh, I believe some of them really haven't known the Lord like they should. They're really going to get saved and get grounded in the Lord. Identity issues are going to begin to be settled. They're going to see their identity in Christ not in anything else, but in Christ, taking all other false identities away. God's going to move into your youth group. And I just say, Lord, bring a Jesus revival again to the youth group, Lord. Let them touch. Let them be so on fire, Lord, that you can't contain them in the building, Lord. They're going to be running out even to the nations, Father, missionaries going out, just like you sent my husband and I during the Jesus movement. Lord, send them out to the nations. Raise them up. Send them out. And it's going to be a great year, the Lord said, 2017. If you read my letter, I'm going to just get, hit some highlights of it. This year will be a year like no other. Uh, I asked the Lord for a word, and he said this will be a year of redemption, restoration, realignment, reconstruction, refinement. The Lord said the Rees have it this year, what may look, have looked hopeless. God is going to come, restore, realign, reconstruct, refine. We're living in a time of redemption. You'll begin to see marriages, families, relationships, businesses, churches, and horrible messes uh, turn around because he is the turnaround God. Zephaniah says three in 3, nine. in the end, I will turn things around for the people, and you will. T- he will turn your mourning into dancing. This will be a year of hard cases coming into the fold. Through the word of your testimony, family members, co-workers, neighbors will come, and they will all want to know this God of the turnaround as they see you turn around. And this year will be a year of restoration. He's going to refocus you. The Father is getting a hold of you, and he will remove much of your unhealthy thinking, the preoccupation of your mind with things that really don't matter, the thought patterns of the heart and mind once that once consumed your time, drained the life right out of you, is going to go, and it needs to go. God's refocusing you. In 2 Corinthians 1, 5 says you're going to capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. And as the Lord refocuses you, he's going to restore the proper vision and you'll become more productive than ever this year. And new ideas, revelations will come, bringing financial gain, prosperity, and fulfillment. And I saw garbage being removed, limbs and leaves this year. And the Lord is going to come and breathe a fresh new life into you and restore dreams. Uh, for I saw Lazarus coming out of the grave. And the Lord said, it's in your timetable to receive those, things, those dreams that were once dead restored back to life. And he's going to realign a lot of things. I saw that Tetris game with all the puzzle pieces falling down. And they all start to come in order. And it's just going to get faster and faster. For many people, life has looked like a complex puzzle. They felt like giving up. But God is about to take many of those difficult life puzzles and he's going to fit the pieces back together. Things will start slowly, but then they're going to speed up to the end. And then businesses. I saw businesses. Uh, I have it under reconstruction. You're going to rethink your business plans. You're going to die where you've divested in the wrong areas. And uh, you're going to put people in different places because they weren't gifted in one place. And you're going to move them to another. You're going to rename some of the businesses. So recovery and restoring is, is his what he's going to do in businesses. Some of you... It looked like your business is going to go under, but when you do this, he's going to turn it around and refinement. He's refining us. The circumstances that caught you off guard last year, it's not going to catch you off guard this year. 
because you've learned. And our faith in the Lord convinces us that he is more than able to keep all that we placed in his hands safe and secure until the fullness of his appearing. This year, you're going to walk in the overcoming spirit. He's going to make you strong and give you victory. In Jesus' name. I saw crutches being thrown off, and I felt like that was the crutches, the things that we've leaned on. This year, you're not going to have to lean on them because people are going to discover that they can fly and they can soar in the Lord. He's going to give you wings to fly, and he's going to put the Holy Spirit uh, wind under your wings. Re and rejoice. Finally, rejoice, the Lord says. Again, I say rejoice. This is going to be a great year. Look what the Lord has done, you're going to say. Yes, he did mighty miracles, and we are overjoyed. Just give him a praise offering. It's going to be good. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to move in you, move in your family, move in the city, move in your youth. Thank you, Jesus. Bless him. Wow. Man, talk about a hard act to follow, Pastor Nick. <laughs> Woo, baby. Microphone's on fire up here. My, my, my. Mm. Yeah, we celebrate our 46th anniversary this year. Yeah. 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 She hasn't given up on me. That is a miracle. Um, Pastor Glenn mentioned about the Passion Translation. Anybody reading the Passion Translation? Uh, yeah, mm, a few. Great. <laughs> Thou shalt go out at the end of this serviceth and go to the book tableth and picketh up Passion Translation. I want to give one away to somebody today. I want to give this to a man, to a guy, all right? And um, here's who I really want to give it to. I want to give it to somebody that has maybe thought about reading Proverbs in 2017, that you want the wisdom of God to help you be a man of wisdom for your family, for your work. Nobody has thought about reading Proverbs. We've got one right here. Give him a hand, please. Yeah. I want you to have that read by tomorrow morning. <laughs> That's great. You know, 500 years ago, the, the um, Reformation took place with Martin Luther. He's recognized as the tipping point of the Reformation. It was October 31st, 1517, 500 years ago, that he nailed to the Wittenberg Chapel door the 95 Thesis of the Reformation and brought real clarity uh, from the Word of God to the people of God. And it, it caused a stirring. I mean, a big one. It's the Protestant Reformation of those that that realize that we don't go through a church to go through God. We don't pay our way out of purgatory. We come to Jesus Christ alone. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And everyone who comes to him by faith, he receives. And that sparked an amazing move of God. And here we sit 500 years later, and we're all benefactors of that, uh, of that blessing. Well... October 31st, 2017 is the date we have set to release the Passion Translation. And I pray that it would spark a true reformation in our hearts, that we'd no longer relate to God at a distance, but we'd realize His passion for us, that He is a, a passionate God that is full of love and mercy for His people. He's infinitely more merciful and kind than the nicest person you know, believe me. He has limitless mercy. It says his mercy goes beyond the heavens. That's pretty high, isn't it? And new mercies kiss us every morning. Every morning when our eyelids flutter open, new mercies from heaven come upon us. So it's been our, our desire to bring a passionate, emotive, heart-level translation to this rising generation that would relate to God minus religion if I could say that here in this Episcopal church, <laughs> that we would just come to God, you know, with our heart bare and let him put in us all that he wants to embed into our hearts. So thank you for those of you that are reading the Passion Translation. I hope you'll pray for us as we finish. I'm uh, going to be working on Revelation 18. I'm almost done. Um, four more chapters, and I'll finish the New Testament. It'll be all done. Then it goes through a five-month theological and editorial review and uh, peer level review and then and then we release it uh, October 31st so I'm happy about that and and that's uh, you know when you 
when you start a project that takes eight years, uh, and then you see the light at the end of the tunnel, it does bring uh, joy and delight. Uh, I will just have a party the day we finish. I think we're going to be in Israel, actually. I think I'm going to finish the New Testament in Israel next month. We're going to go there with our wild friends, George and Winnie Banoff. All right. You ready for my six-hour sermon? <laughs> Very underwhelmed. Um, tell you what. If you'll stand and open your heart to God, I promise we'll be out sometime today. Do you love him today? Yeah. Let's just take a moment and just quiet our hearts and just see what he's going to do here within us. kind Father, we ask you to speak to our hearts today. And I pray that there would never again be depression knocking at our door. That never again would we go into the cave of melancholy, of discouragement. But you would inspire us with your living flame today in such a way we never Look at life the same. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Thank you. You could be seated. So uh, Candace brought a wonderful word to us, and it, I sure can't top that, but I have a word for this church, and I have a word for you personally. And 2017 is going to be a really good year. The word I was given... I believe from the Lord, was the word fullness. The Lord is going to bring fullness, full measure, completion. He's going to bring to you this year not fractions and partial and halves. He's bringing you fullness. Some of you look like you could use some fullness today. You see, when you live in the realm of partial and fragments, when you live on a plateau, not the ultimate peak that he's destined you to be on, but in a plateau of status quo, we get discouraged. We lose energy. We give up. But this is a year the Lord is going to restore fullness to you, to your life, to your heart, to your marriage, relationships. How about a career track that finally gets going the way God wants it to go? How about a family that gets so healed and the fullness of the love of God vibrating powerfully among you that your, your kids actually want to wanna be with you? And, and, I mean, and not just to ask for money. They'll actually want to be with you. That fullness is coming. This church, you're going to complete very soon. The next time we come, we'll be, we'll be over there. We'll be in that Beautiful new building celebrating with, with you and the youth on fire, children just everywhere. Uh, go have some more, everybody. And, and uh, <laughs> blessings galore, you know, salvation, <laughs> baptism. You're going to have a baptistry in that new building, aren't you? Isn't there? Yeah, we'll just heat that puppy up and just, man, oh, man. You know, when we pastored over at Gateway, they were a little, some of my team was a little ornery. I'll never forget the time they, they refused to heat the water, and it was like February or something, and they wouldn't heat the water on purpose just to get at me, you know. And then one other time, there was a shark, little shark swimming around. It was plastic, but it was, <laughs> they, they put this mechanized shark swimming around the baptistry. Oh, my, we had some amazing experiences there. The glory of the Lord is going to fill your baptistry. Favor is going to come to this house. Fullness is going to come. And we're going to fully complete the project. And what that means is God's going to provide the rest of that money that's coming in. And we're going to see the, the rest of the finances pile in here. I'm not taking an offering, I don't think, for that. But uh, 
consider that final push. I know you've given. I know you've been a blessing to this house. You've done so many wonderful things to encourage the leadership team and to put bricks on the frame of that building. But now we need the electrical, the plumbing, and the, the fixtures and to really finish it. Uh, what was it, 800000 You know, let, let's have 900000 come in because there's going to be some extra expenses. And I may blow out the sound system here before we're over and we have to put another hundred k into that. But Lord, just provide the money. Provide the finances. You're the, the great God of glory. And it's according to the riches of your grace that you give to us. And we ask, Lord, that according to the riches of your grace, you would supply abundantly that we could complete this project. Amen. And we say we because I, my heart's with you and my wife and I are going to contribute as well. We want to see this project come to pass. So this is going to be a year of fullness. Everybody say a year of fullness. The Greek word for fullness is pleroma, pleroma. Pleroma is used 17 times in the New Testament. I thought that was interesting that the Lord gave me that word, and I looked it up and began to study fullness. In 2017, there's 17 reasons for you to walk in the fullness of God. I'm not going to give you all 17, but a lot of them. I'm going to share some of these with you over the next four hours. And I want you to get so full of the favor, fire, and fragrance of Christ that you begin to carry like Mary the divinity within you and that you release something wherever you go. You're the most loving person in every room you go into. You're the most full of Jesus individual in every room you walk into. Ha. Ha. <clears throat> Fullness is in your destiny. You're not destined for half you don't operate very well with half. You don't want half a mind, half a body, or half a passion, or half a heart. We want to be wholehearted with all of our mind, strength, soul, and spirit, passionately serving Him this year. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm going to keep going until you, you get happy on me here in this yeah. Lutheran church. <laughs> Pleroma is found in Romans 15:29. And it's, it's, um, it's also describing, the word pleroma can be used to describe loading a ship full of cargo. You've seen these ships that have all of the containers stacked up. That is the word pleroma. It is full, loaded, you can't put any more in. That's what God wants to do in your life this year. Instead of saying more, Lord, you're going to say, I can't take any more, Lord. Spread the blessing to somebody else. I am so blessed, filled, overjoyed that my family thinks I'm wacky and I'm living up to the reputation they put on me. Yeah. To be full is going to be the theme of your year. Romans 15, 29, Paul writes, I am convinced that when I come to you, I will come packed, full, and loaded with the blessings of the anointed one. I feel like I'm coming to you today, this beautiful church here, uh, Sunday morning mass, I'm coming to you <laughs> packed full and loaded with the blessings of God. And if you won't take them, the person next to you will. But the blessings of the Lord are going to spill out. In the first service, I saw a wave of the, f of the favor. I saw the fullness like a wave sweep over the worship team. And then it just stopped right here. I said, well, Lord, why is it stopping? said, the people are going to have to pull it in. I want the fullness of God in my life. I want my family full, complete, healed, whole, doing every, all, every one of our three kids, six grandkids, and two great-granddaughters doing everything that they can to walk in the fullness of God. That's the legacy I want to leave for my family. Your season of partial and incomplete is over. The things that are half-finished about you are going to be completed. You've seen God do wonderful things in 2016, but 2017 is going to eclipse that. Take the 10 best years of your life. Bundle them up. They combined won't even come close to what God is going to do in your life in 2017. <laughs> Financial breakthrough. Career path opening up for you. Schooling, education, if that's where you are in life. You may even get married this year if you're single. How about that? Amen. 
said all the bachelors, amen. <laughs> you see, God has created you to live with the enthusiasm of fullness in your life. He wants to top you off full, to be complete. I, there's so many verses that describe the pleroma. Ephesians 1.23 is fascinating to me. Fascinating. Listen to this. It says that we, the church, we are the pleroma. We are the fullness of Christ. We're the completion of him. We complete him. I'm not half a man without my woman, without my wife. And I wonder if that almost could be said of him. In a supernatural, indescribable way, there's something missing in him. It's us. He's complete. He lacks nothing. But yet, he wants us to complete him, to finish the work. You know, the Acts 29 church is that church uh, that, that wants to finish the work that he began to do and to teach. Acts ends in chapter 28, see? But we carry on that, that work unhindered. The very last word of the book of Acts is unhindered. Isn't that right? Yeah. And, and unhindered and unfettered will be this church throughout 2017. Move the false goalposts. Move them further. You're going to live longer, do more, succeed in every dimension he calls you to. You're going to excel in things that you haven't done real well at lately. But God is going to increase the favor and anointing on your house. He's going to bless you, harvest time, believers. He's going to bless you like never before. Position yourself for that blessing. Get ready. You've been operating half full. It's not going to happen anymore. You're going to have the fullness of God, and some of us believe it. Amen. In this Baptist church, yeah. What does it mean to complete him, to be the fullness of him who feels everything in every way? I mean, he, you know, it's not good for the son of man to be alone. And he wants a partner. He wants a bride, and it's us. We're the, his completion. We've, we extend his beauty to the earth. He's the head in heaven, but we're his feet. And how beautiful are the feet of those that preach good news. Say, so we're a feet company. You know, it's, Satan is going to be crushed under our feet. The last part of a baby to be born is the feet. And the last generation will complete him in every way. We will complete the Christ in every way. The fullness of him. That's who we are. So let's live up to that. Let's start fully representing him, representing him wherever we go. The fullness of Christ. Don't you want to have so much of him that you, you slosh? That you, you literally, wherever you go, you leave a residue of the Christ? That you, you know, Christ in front of me? St. Patrick's breastplate prayer. Christ in front of me. Christ behind me. Christ to the left of me. Christ to the right of me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in front of me, Christ in every word I speak, Christ in every eye that sees me. Let the living Christ be in fullness this year. It'll be a great year when you let him have everything within your heart. I think about the pleroma of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We're to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You ever thought what you would look like and live like if you were like full of the Holy Spirit? Now, there would be some religious people who wouldn't like you, but to be full of the Holy Spirit, what would that look like? Let's find out this year. Let's get so full of love that people say, I don't know you anymore. I thought you were alpha dog type A male guy that just kind of pushed your way through everything. Well, what happens when the subtlety of love comes on into our heart? We begin to care about people. We're not going to be moved from our destiny by people, but we're going to care and, and stoop to bless and help the child, the widow, the orphan, the disenfranchised, those that have been ignored. 
that we seek out like a river the lowest place. And the river as it flows through us, we will go into the lowest place of humanity and we will raise them up and bring them forward. That's what love's all about. Love has feet. Love has shoes on. Love has hands that touches. To be full of the Holy Spirit is to be full of His fruit. You could use some more joy. You know, you really could. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, come on. You can give up the, the criticizing and just suddenly, ha, ha, you just laugh. Laugh your way into the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy, Holy Ghost or Spirit, depending on what church you're in. I like Holy Ghost myself, but that's okay. To be full of the Spirit means full of His fruit, full of His wisdom, full of His power, full of His gifts. Wouldn't it be great that you got some gifts from the Holy Spirit today? That the gift of faith would rise up in you? Boy, leaders in churches need the gift of faith. And we need that gift in ministry. That expands the kingdom of God. How about the gift of prophecy? It's a valid gift. The Bible says we're to covet that. We're to pursue it. Love is greater. But hey, prophecy is good too. And when we have a prophetic gifting, we're going to help people, encourage them in their destiny, inspire them with the flame of God. We're not going to put them down and smack them up one side and down the other, but we're going to lift them up to new levels. There is a valid gift of exhortation, of stirring up and getting a fire built. But my experience as a pastor is that people come into our churches needing a word of encouragement. They've been beat up through the week. That I'm just glad they came, you know. We, we, always had, uh, we always had multiple services at our church. We had one that started at 10 and then the one that started at 10.15 when everybody got there. <laughs> and, you know, the first working that through as a pastor, you go, well, can't we, can't we all come? And then I began to realize, Brian, just be thrilled anybody came <laughs> knowing you're here. I said, oh, that's right, Lord, that's right. So the Lord wants to put joy in your heart. Peace. How about that? Could you use some peace? Just to peace out this year. To honestly, to guard and cherish. Jesus says, I give my peace. And you think his peace is good? It's good, baby. I give you my peace. Wow. The peace that heaven contains. I give it as a gift to you. I take that gift. That's a gift I want. The gift of peace. The fullness of God is coming to you this year. Philippians 1, 9, and 10, Paul prays for the flipped out Philippians and, and uh, <laughs> prays, um, I continue to pray for you, verse, chapter 1, verse 9, I continue to pray for your love to grow and increase beyond measure. See if you can find the word pleroma here. I pray for your love to grow and increase beyond measure bringing you into the rich revelation of spiritual insight in all things. Love is the key to insight and revelation. Love is the key for knowledge. It's not the other way around. This will enable you to choose the most excellent way of all, becoming pure without offense until the unveiling of Christ, and you will be filled completely with the fruits of righteousness. Pleroma. Would you like to be filled this year completely with fruits of righteousness? I'm going to give you three ways that you can be filled to the fullness of God. And then I'm going to pray over you a decree from Ephesians chapter 3. You and me. <clears throat> three ways that you can step into the fullness of God this year. Number one. Get hungry and thirsty for more. Let your spiritual hunger have no end. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They will be satiated. They will be filled. The Lord wants to fill you. But often we, we are so self-content in our own mess. You know, we're like the Laodicean church, God forbid, that says, I, I'm already rich. I'm already 
robed. I already see when Jesus said, you don't know that you're naked, poor, miserable, and blind. May we not be a people that over-exaggerate where we are, but we would constantly be hungry for more. Secondly, we feast on the Word of God. How sweet are your words to me, David writes, Psalm 119, actually Many believe it was Ezra that wrote that. But how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. If you're really going to be filled with the fullness of God, it starts loving his word. There's nothing wrong. There's not religious to read the Bible, folks. It's survival. It's it, it, it's necessity. It's like eating and drinking. It's a it, necessary requirement for life in the spirit is that we read, process, meditate, ponder the word of God. I've gone into the studio for days and recorded every book of that we've translated so far in an audible version. Personally, I like paper and, you know, iPads and apps on my phone, but there are others who like to hear that that's their primary way of learning and, and receiving. So we've, we've made that available. And uh, you'll hear my voice, like it or not, reading through the Psalms and Proverbs. I've got people that say they go to sleep with me reading the Psalms to me. I, I don't know exactly how to take that, but that's wonderful. That's great. <clears throat> and now, <laughs> Psalm 3. I lay my head down and my eyes, okay. The third way that we get full of the fullness of God is we drink of the Holy Spirit. We get hungry, we read the Word, and we drink. Now I'm going to invite you now to drink of the Holy Spirit. We're going to worship. I'd like to do a worship song, and if I had permission, I want to come back and then read this uh, prayer of Paul to finish. But would you stand and drink? Drink. It's illegal. We won't card you. Drink. Drink of the Holy Spirit. Now that's biblical. It says in 1 Corinthians 10 that we've all been made to drink of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, it's like, how do you drink spirit? I don't know, but I like it. I'm going to do it. And, you know, One of my friends says, well, you lift up your barrel. (laughs) You just drink. Drink of the Holy Spirit. Open your heart like a sail to the wind. Don't be an anchor anymore. Be free, untethered. Let the Spirit wind, the Ruach of God, the Spirit wind fill your sail. And take you into your destiny, into the fullness. Don't you want to get unstuck? Don't you want to be in a different place? I read a survey recently that said that that people in Connecticut, of course, if you're in New York, I guess you're safe. But the people in Connecticut have one of the highest levels of dissatisfaction in their lives. Which is really strange because, you know, to me it's just strange. We need to have a satisfying river flow through us. So we'll learn from you New Yorkers, but may every one of us nutmeggers come to that place where we receive and drink the Holy Spirit. Put your hand over your heart. I'm sure you have one. And just say, I drink of you, Holy Spirit. I'm thirsty. For fullness. I don't want partial or fragments. I want fullness. Whatever that means, whatever it would look like, and whatever the cost. Let's worship Him.